It's Las Vegas Live. We're here at the moment at the Hilton Las Vegas, and I'm joined by a fascinating man who's at really one of the world's most famous hotels, I would imagine, Ira Sternberg. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Alex. I thought you were going to say I was one of the most famous people, but you mean the hotel. <laughs> You're absolutely right. The Hilton, uh, the Las Vegas Hilton, uh, you call it the Hilton Las Vegas, actually Las Vegas Hilton, right. has been a mainstay for decades here in Las Vegas, and it's going through a, what I would call a renaissance. Uh, new ownership took over uh, in 2004 in June and we've been going strong with not only a new entertainment policy featuring a major name such as Barry Manilow who's here for a long term engagement but also to do some remodeling reconstruction renovation and uh, it is a fascinating period of time to be here at the Las Vegas Hilton it seems to me as if Vegas is exploding right now we've had, we've got the big casinos like the Bellagio and Paris and Aladdin that are all on the strip and it seems as if everything's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and everybody has to have some hook to bring people in now you've got Barry Manilow but do you have to do more than that? Has the building got to be taller than everybody else's? Has the water feature got to be bigger than everybody else's? Do you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying, Alex. It's, and it's a myth uh, in one sense. Uh, we welcome uh, any new property that opens in Las Vegas because it does bring more and more visitors to us. And it gives a chance for the individual properties to be experienced. But more important than a particular size of a building or height of a building is the people that work in the building. And what I'm talking about is service. And the Las Vegas Hilton being a very traditional and legendary property, uh, service is one of the key elements of it. So, yes, we do have a major headliner, Barry Manilow. We do have Star Trek uh, uh, as a... As a um as an attraction here that's as part of our property and, and draws millions of visitors each year. We have excellent restaurants. Uh, we have great gaming and we have a great convention area. We have conventions that come here from all over the world. But none of that makes any sense if you don't have great customer service because people won't return if they don't get good service. And that's one of the things we specialize in. I suppose one of the things that you have that the others don't is the heritage. The name must just call people from around the world. Everybody knows of the Hilton. There's a Hilton in every city in the UK, in Europe, in the world. That must be helpful to you, opposed to the other people who probably are, are less well-known and, and you don't necessarily know what quality you're getting. You're right about that, Alex. What, what differentiates us is... Uh, Partly the Las Vegas uh, Hilton name, the Hilton brand, we use the Hilton reservation system. We are our own entity in the sense that we are uh, licensing the Hilton name and we are the Las Vegas Hilton, but we also uh, stand alone in terms of uh, what we want to do here in Las Vegas. So, for example, we signed a long term engagement with Barry Manlow, who will be performing here through 2006, a great performer doing very well here for us. We have David Brenner, who is our resident uh, comedian here at the Shimmer Cabaret, which we're just sitting outside of, that seats 300 people, and he's here on a nightly basis, and he does great business for us as well. Uh, the key to that whole approach of Las Vegas is, and people don't talk enough about it, is, is really a diversity of offerings. Yes, you do want to see the latest thing here, whether it's a Win Las Vegas or some other property that opens up, but at the same time, you have such a wide variety of experiences, and that includes uh, not just gaming, which really was the mainstay for Vegas up till in the last 10 years, but now you have dining, you have uh, retail, and uh, you have entertainment. These are all key elements of the Las Vegas experience, and what differentiates Las Vegas as a destination compared to anywhere else in the world is the infrastructure we've built up over decades. Uh, you'll have you have world class chefs here uh, per square mile more here than anywhere else uh, in terms of unusual architecture and theming more here than per square than anywhere else in the world retail experiences more here in, than anywhere else in the world all concentrated in a very small area the Las Vegas Strip and of course downtown Las Vegas as well so Las Vegas really is a collection of unusual uh, and a high experience this is probably one of the oldest hotels and certainly one of the most experienced in dealing with customers. How are you coping as a town with all these people coming in? 40 million visitors a year was a figure that was thrown at me. There are only a million people who live here. It's, it's moving so fast. So many buildings are going up. They're almost quicker than you would imagine that you could cope. Is Vegas able to cope with all this development? Las Vegas is able to cope because uh, Las Vegas, the secret about Las Vegas, and I've been here 27, 28 years, uh, there are periods where people say, well, how much more can we build? Where are these people going to come from to visit? 
I will tell you, they keep coming, and we keep building. And yes, we will. We are we are a problem-solving destination. What I mean by that is that if we need to find more space, we'll find more space. If we need to find uh, basic infrastructure, we'll find it or build it. If we need to find more water, we'll find it. We'll get it. We're very much a can-do city and a can-do destination, and that we do that because we provide the experience that you can't get anywhere else. I'm right in thinking that the, for the people who live here, they're having to now build up opposed to out because it's literally as big as it can be now in terms of radius. It's now having to build tall, and you're having to build apartments for people in blocks of flats. Well, that's starting to happen. You're right, Alex. That's starting to happen. I don't think it's necessarily going to be just that way. It's, again, part of what I, t- I talked about earlier, the diversity of offerings here in Las Vegas. So on a real estate level, yes, you will have condos that are built, high-rise buildings that are built, uh, but we're not at that stage where it's going to be exclusively that. I think it'll always be a mix. As you mentioned earlier, we have about a million people. I think that's 1.3, 1.4 million people. When I moved here, there were about 400,000 people here. The only difference I see now versus then is that um, traffic's a little bit more. (laughs) But really, it's still, to us, it's a small town, even though it's a major metropolis and it's it's a very sophisticated in some ways a very sophisticated metropolis not in all ways but in some ways but again you, whatever you want you can find in Las Vegas and I, that's why I love it here and the Las Vegas Hilton particularly is great because it is a legendary property and yet it offers a lot of the experiences people are looking for today as well you have the rich history and we're celebrating our centennial as a city so you have the rich history of the Las Vegas Hilton and Las Vegas but at the same time you have as I mentioned earlier, great dining, great entertainment, great service. That, that stays, this stays constant. Talking of legends, there's Las Vegas, there's the Hilton, and then there's Elvis. And you were very lucky here to have Elvis performing here. I mean, what, what, what a remarkable thing that was. Tell me a little bit about Elvis and the history here at the Hilton. Elvis started at, at what well, was then called the International, and he started uh, July 31st, 1969. Uh, there's a couple of, of general numbers that are throughout there in terms of consecutive performances, but uh, you could certainly say more than 800 consecutive sold-out shows he performed here. And then his final show was December 12th, 1976. Uh, he used to have a suite here called the Elvis Suite, coincidentally. Uh, that no longer exists. We have some great villa suites instead, and those are, are reserved for our high rollers. But over here at the lobby, more than a man, I'd say about 300 feet from where we're sitting, is an Elvis statue, and that uh, was there when we purchased the property last year, and that will remain. Uh, Elvis is a part of, of this history of the Las Vegas Hilton. I'm sure you wouldn't want to disassociate yourself from that, because he's so popular. No, we, we, we have no intention of disassociating, or disassociating ourselves. Uh, we're very much, uh, uh, very much aware of the impact of Elvis. You mentioned earlier the word high roller, and that really is the thing that, that you guys must love here in Vegas, because these are the people that come in and don't spend ten dollars, twenty dollars. We're talking ten thousand, twenty thousand, possibly even twenty million for the for the big players. You'll do anything to get these guys in, won't you? You'll fly them in. You'll do whatever you can to help them out. We'll do anything legally to bring in great players who are we use one term high rollers. Uh, we actually what, what's great about the Hilton again is that uh, as you look around we're set up for a person who just wants to play a slot machine for a nickel or uh, someone who wants to bet 10,000 a hand we can handle it we have a great Bacar room and we have yes we will fly uh, big players in we'll put them up at the villa suites that I talked about or other suites that we have here at the Hilton uh, and you know, we'll obviously take care of their, their dining requests and anything else they have and it's just part of the, and their entertainment requests so, so they'll come see Barry or if we need to send them somewhere else to see another show we will because that's part of what Las Vegas does how do I become a high roller I mean is it possible for the likes of me uh, with relatively little money to do it I mean is this a reputation that you get these guys names because there can't be many people in the world who are on your list well let me check your wallet Alex and see how much money you actually have in there (laughs) just moths I think well you you, you sort of answered your own question in the sense that if you are a player that means you have the money to play and if you have the money to play we'll we'll, uh, hope to have you come in here we'll certainly uh, host you and show you around and uh, we have uh, our, our obviously our hosts that will make contact with people and, and uh, help them out. We have established players here already. So, but we're geared from that and all the way down to the casual player as well. I was watching Sky One, which is one of our digital channels, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they had the top 10 suites in Vegas. And you came right near the top, and they were just amazing, breathtaking, completely over the top, and fabulous. I mean, is this something that you pride yourself on against the other casinos to give the most luxury you possibly can to your customers? It certainly is. It's, 
in fact, uh, what's ironic is these suites, the villa suites particularly, were built several years ago, so they're not uh, they're not part of, uh, of uh, anything that's been built in the last two or three or four or five years, yet we would uh, uh, balance that or match those against any suite in town. They're that great. If Riff Raff like me wanted to stay in one of them, how much would it cost me? Well, I, I wouldn't call you Riff Raff. You called yourself Riff Raff. <laughs> I, would call, I would call you a non-Villa Suite dweller. <laughs> uh, that's, that's PR speak for Riff Raff. Right. Come on. <laughs> but if, if you could get a collection going, and maybe your listeners can do it for you, Alex, uh, I would say on an average probably if they were available, because obviously we provide them to our players first, but let's assume they were available. I would say eh, 15000 a night. That's barely a round of drinks to me. Yeah, How dare you? What does that convert to uh, in pounds? That's something like 10,000 pounds. There you go. <laughs> and mind you, the dollar is good right now, so you're getting benefit for that, I suppose. Listen, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Iris Sternberg is the uh, Vice President of Communications here at the uh, Las Vegas Hilton, and it is a spectacular hotel. And with so much history and the Elvis stuff, it's a place that you have to come and visit. There's so many different uh, hotels. You can virtually travel the world now, can't you, on the Strip? And to come here is just a bit of Vegas heritage and history. Absolutely. And if you're staying in another hotel, take the monorail over to us. We're right a block from the Strip, so we're pretty close and we're connected with the monorail station. Ira, you mentioned earlier the fact that Barry Manilow's here for a long time. Hey, he's going gangbusters, selling tickets every single night. Let's play a track of uh, of his because um, he's so popular around the world and presumably that's somebody you've got to look for in your your big stars, someone who has international appeal. He is. A, he is a. Uh, he has a, an appeal that transcends generations and any demographic you can think of. I go in and see when he performs, and there's everybody from grandmothers to teenagers. It's great. Thanks for talking to us today. Thank you. The Alex Belfield In Conversation podcast with DaisyMedia.co.uk. Alex Belfield.